Um, what are we? Dissidents, nearly. And I know that some of the guys who've come out of the military fairly recently, if they've started to pick up what we're all talking about, that is how the Ministry of Defence is labelling them. So if you come out of the military now and you dare to start questioning what it's all about, you're a dissident, and I think that's one step down from a domestic terrorist. So what we're saying is that we need to get the label back on the, the right people. And in my opinion, the domestic terrorists are in Westminster, and we need to actually keep pinning these little sound bites on these people. Yeah. Um, now, I did a bit of adjustment while I was listening. This is um, just to prove that we are all working together. This was a page in the UK column quite a while ago, but we did start to pick up on chemtrails. I think that was a picture taken... I think that's Plymouth. I can't read what it says now because it's too small. Um, all I'll say is that, that uh, from my military background, I spent quite a lot of time at sea, um, particularly if you're near any of the aircraft carriers, especially the American ones, you see jets operating in a fantastic way. And when I saw the first aircraft going over my house where there was a trail from one horizon to another horizon, and I took the dogs for a walk, and when I came back two hours later, that trail was still there, I was amazed because it obviously was not a, a condensation trail. So for me, it's just obvious that these things are not uh, normal. I can also tell you that um, recently we've had contact from a, an airline pilot. Um, I, I won't say which airline he's involved with, but he phoned us up, said he'd been following what we were talking about and would like to meet us. And eventually when he did, he lives out of the country, but when he made one of the trips back to UK, he came down to Plymouth and... Uh, came and had a chat with Mike and myself, and one of the things he was talking about was the trails, and he said it's very obvious to me because I can be up at altitude watching them or seeing them or watching them being formed. Um, uh, but what he started to do was, was to put some facts about how it works in the aviation industry. And one of the things he's pointing out is that there are now standard additives in jet fuel um, they're anti-static agents, so uh, supposedly they are helping reduce the possibility of um, sort of spark igni uh, ignited fire, particularly when they're refueling and things. Um, and there is some, some background to this, but he, he gave us a couple of um, aviation fuel specification sheets where you can read about these additives, and clearly some of these additives are producing some some of the trails, but he is also fully of the opinion that there are other aircraft out there that are spraying. But he says you don't mention it within the company, and he said some of the pilots uh, who've shown a bit of interest in what's going on were very quickly told, forget it, otherwise you won't be working with us much longer. So this pilot, who I think is going to give us more information, but he's talking about a fear culture within the airlines over people who know what's going on. Um, the other thing I'll say is that it's also obvious to me, I, I'm just going to say from a professional point of view, that you see aircraft that are clearly on a commercial flight path. Um, so that's one problem. But then you'll see these multiple aircraft, many of them at very low altitude, eight or 10,000 feet. And they are clearly not commercial because they're not fuel efficient at those low altitudes. So my opinion is this is real and it's it's going on. You need to get to grips with it. Are you saying they're actually creating chemtrails at over 10,000 feet? Absolutely, yeah. Well, that's, that's absolute proof that they are chemtrails because they can't... Because they're too too low for condensation trails, yeah. If you, if you want to get a bit technical, uh, you have to do a bit of trigonometry. If you buy a cheap telescopic sight for an air rifle, and... Uh, you can work it out on a piece of paper, but you take an assessment of the length of the aircraft, 110, 120 feet, and then you do a little bit of trigonometry. So you just need to be, be able to measure the angle that you're observing the aircraft. And uh, you, can, you can calculate the height reasonably accurately. That's how they used to do it in the Second World War. I'm not that old. <laughs>
And uh, this is the other thing that was mentioned, OSCE, and this is a document that I nearly fell off my perch when I found it on the internet, because all it says is common purpose. Um, but this, um, if, you, if you just put in OSCE, common purpose, you'll get it on Google. And if you read about it, they're talking about creating the security of the Euro European Union from the Urals to the Atlantic. And they're talking about meetings to do with all sorts of, of semi-security type things throughout Europe, where very strange people are meeting to discuss it. So this thing is real, and there is absolutely a common purpose. Um, but if you look at the way, um, it's just a brief comment on this, but if you look at the way uh, we're now seeing um, geoengineering uh, utilising airspace, the same thing is starting to go on with control of the oceans. Um, so these big geoengineering projects require world government ultimately. So I just thought I'd put that up. Okay. Well, a um, little bit of blatant advertising in the UK column. I just want to say that uh, for a long time we've been trying to do this business of pin on the perpetrators what needs to be pinned. They're traitors. It doesn't matter what party they're from, Gordon Brown as it was then, and a very young Cameron and Clegg. But these people are working together. They are working to a common purpose. Of course, a common purpose is actually a crime, if you look it up in a law dictionary. And they're betraying the country. But we know that they're having their strings pulled. And um, I think it was the Mirror a few days ago actually just said, well, Cameron's a liar and he's a deceiver. And I like that language. I was very impressed. And um, then it went on to say, but of course, he's only a front for the banksters. And I was fascinated by that because obviously that was a mainstream paper picking up on the type of language that's going around in the alternative press. Banker, gangster. So I think that we're having a much bigger effect than we think we are. And... Um, uh, I won't betray too much, but Patrick said to me just now that he'd been in a particular bar up in London where there were people who we will call mainstream. I only wear a suit because it's a sort of uniform. I know that if I keep my suit on, some people believe me, some don't, but I'm, I'm winning more than I'm losing. Um, but he said that he was amongst suits and they are now talking about um, reading our material and his material and other material. So it's good, isn't it? Right, now, what I, what I just wanted to do, um, and this is, this is why I'm going to keep it quite loose, so I'm happy to drift around, but for me, the biggest thing is this concept that we're being attacked, uh, the subversion process. And this is the book that I first got this from. It was written by a guy called Christopher Story, who unfortunately is no longer with us. Um, many people are suspicious of his death. But whether it was suspicious or not, we don't know. Um, but in the, in the front of the book was a table. Uh, this is a similar table that I've got on screen. But essentially what it was talking about was the means by which 